So, the word for word meaning, Santa is good. Samadrisha, equipoised. Suddha, cleansed, purified. Sarva, all. Bhuta, living in religion. Anuranjanaha, pleasing. Janti, go. Anjasa, easily. Achuta, of the Lord. Madam, to the abode. Achuta Priya, with devotees of the Lord. Pandavaha, friends. Translation, but the best with the first, with the first key, which I got. So, translation. You can repeat after me. Persons who are peaceful, equipoised, cleansed, and purified, and who know the art of pleasing all other living entities. Keep friendship only with devotees of the Lord. They alone can very easily achieve the perfection of going back home, back to Godhead. So, beautiful verse. We'll read the purport also and then we'll discuss it. So, purport by Prabhupada. The description of this verse. Okay, uh, while we read the purport, uh, this verse is lots of things packed on in it. So we can go on for it in different, different directions. Today, the theme we want to focus on why devotee association is valuable and how that helps us. That is the focus we'll go today. And then a little bit on why it's important to share with others. Krishna consciousness. Those two areas will focus while you're reading the purport. Purport. The description of this verse fully indicates that only devotees are eligible to enter into the kingdom of Godhead. The first point stated is that devotees are peaceful. So Prabhupada is describing one by one qualities, some of the qualities that are mentioned in the translation. For, for the first point stated is that devotees are peaceful, for they have no demands for their personal sense gratification. They are simply dedicated to the service of the Lord. Karmis cannot be peaceful because they have immense demands for sense gratification. So, Prabhupada is going to purport why each category of transcendental list are people who are on the path ultimately, in one sense, go by Godhead, how they are not peaceful. Karmis cannot be peaceful because they have immense demands for sense gratification. As for Gnanis, they cannot be peaceful because they are too busy trying to attain liberation or merge into the existence of Supreme. Similarly, yogis are also restless to get mystic power. But a devotee is peaceful. Why? Because he is fully surrendered to Supreme Personality of Godhead and thinks of himself as completely helpless, just as a child feels complete peace in depending on the parent. So a devotee is completely peaceful. For he depends on the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A devotee is equipoised, second quality. He sees everyone on the same transcendental platform. A devotee knows that although a conditioned soul has a particular type of body, according to his past fruitive activities, actually everyone is part of the Supreme Lord. A devotee sees all living entities with spiritual vision and does not discriminate on the platform of the bodily concept of life. Such qualities develop only in the association of devotees. I'll repeat the sentence and we'll pay attention to a couple of sentences. Such qualities like peacefulness, equipoised, 
develop only in the association of devotees. Without the association of devotees, one cannot advance in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, therefore is a punchline whenever you see. Therefore, we have established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Actually, whoever lives in the society automatically develops Krishna Consciousness. We will focus on the three sentences while discussing. Devotees are dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the Supreme Personality of Godhead is only dear to devotees. On this platform, only can, make, can one make progress in Krishna Consciousness. Persons in Krishna Consciousness are devotees of the Lord. Can please everyone. Prabhupada is going to next quality. Describe this language. As is evident in Krishna Consciousness movement. We invite everyone without discrimination. We request everyone to sit down and chant the Hare Krishna Mantra. And take as much prasada as we can supply. And thus everyone is pleased with us. This is the qualification. Sarva Bhutanu Ranjanaha. As for purification, now Prabhupada moving to next quality. <coughs> Devotees cleansed and purified. As for purification, no one can be more pure than devotees. Anyone who once utters the name of Vishnu immediately becomes purified. Inside and outside. Yasmare Pundari Kaksham. Since a devotee constantly chants the Hare Krishna mantra, no contamination of the material world can touch him. So when we constantly chant the Hare Krishna mantra, no contamination of the material world can touch him. He is therefore actually purified. Muchihaya, Suchihaya, Yadi Krishna Baje. It is said that even a cobbler or a person born in the family of a cobbler can be elevated to the position of a Brahmana, Suchi, if he takes to Krishna consciousness. Any person who is purely Krishna conscious and who engages in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is the purest in the whole universe. So that ends the purport. So this topic itself is wide, very vast also. Uh, the, because we commonly hear so much from scriptures, from gurus and sadhus also. So, but we'll discuss some portion of it at least today. We'll offer, I'll offer praise to the Acharyas and then we can start from there. ृष्णचैतन्यदेव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाधान सागन ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्ते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी सुशुभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नम नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधारा श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो एक्चुअली पैक्ड परपोर्ट एंड वंडरफुल परपोर्ट so we'll discuss uh, briefly touch on main points of the verse itself purport itself and go into the particular team we have so i'm hoping that uh, i'll speak less and then we'll all share at the end about how devotees what do we see how do we see value in devotees association what are different practical ways we see values so that's why i'll limit it to short time and then we'll go from there so then if there's time left we can discuss further so basically the context of this verse is Dhru Maharaj, we most, all of us know Dhru Maharaj past time. Dhru Maharaj did the, in very short time, six months, by the mercy of Narada Muni, by association of Narada Muni, by following the instructions of Narada Muni, with the determination, with sincerity, with humility, 
then uh, even though initially he was uh, aspiring for something else other than pure bhakti he achieved the perfection of life krishna prema in vaikuntha buses came and uh, they came with a the airplane he was going in the airplane so the previous section of this chapter describes how durga is going back to godhead and this is his mother also coming in another plane to vaikuntha that's how it goes uh, the story line and then now uh, from last verse onwards the description is who is eligible to go back to godhead like that that is the context of this i'll read the last translation because it makes sense uh, text 36 and fourth canto 12th chapter the self effulgent vaikuntha planets by whose illumination alone all the illuminating planets with this middle world give off reflected light cannot be reached by those who are not merciful to other living entities so who who cannot reach vaikuntha is saying those who are not merciful to other living entities prepadra is in the purport that merciful means by sharing krishna consciousness so to helping everybody to go back to god like that oh, last sentence only persons who constantly engage in welfare activities for other living entities can reach the vaikuntha planets so constantly who are helping other living entities they can only reach the vaikuntha planets that's all eligibility of person who can go to spiritual world is described now this was purport one more translation one more time that is one persons who are peaceful equipoised cleansed and purified and who know the art of pleasing other living entities all other living entities keep friendship with only with devotees of the lord they alone can very easily achieve the perfection of going back home back to godhead so there are five qualities described in the verse peaceful equipoised cleansed and purified and the one who knows the art of pleasing all other living entities and then keeping friendship only with devotees if you have these five qualities you can be eligible to go back to godhead that's what we say here again so purport propose making some points i'll briefly touch on each of them and then we'll go on to the move theme also first point is peaceful how can we peaceful only when i'm when my mind is always engaged in how do i enjoy how do i enjoy then i cannot be peaceful so example given is like sense gratification when i'm focused on how to please my senses then i cannot be Uh, satisfied any time because that there is no end to it it keeps on going the agitation is described while attempting to get it we still agitated mind is still anchoring and agitation after you get it how long it will stay we don't know because we know in middle world nothing is permanent we already know intuitively how long it will stay we don't know how do we make sure it stays for longer time that is the end of it that is the agitation and then after some time we know it's temporary it will go away so then also mind is peaceful not peaceful and more agitated again if you are entering for sense gratification so that's what is purpose is describing um, purpose starts with karmis karmis because they are focused on enjoying senses only that means we already discuss how they can be peaceful now gnani is even though grossly it doesn't appear that they are trying to get something at material level at least but they still want something for themselves impersonal liberation merging into supreme brahman like that so because of that because they are asking wanting for something they are hankering for something they can also not be peaceful because hankering is a sign of mode of passion mode of passion people are not peaceful at least you should be mode of goodness so that you can be peaceful so that is one purpose is coming now yogis is another class of transcendentalists they are also wanting something they don't want to sense gratification they don't want merging into brahman but they want some mystic powers so they also cannot be peaceful ultimately because they are wanting to get something true to humanity basically but devotees how can they can be peaceful because they are fully dependent on krishna because they understand whatever endeavor they make ultimately krishna's mercy should be there then only it will be successful they clearly understand that point and that's why propas giving an analogy how a small child is dependent on the parent so uh goring darshan prabhu i think if i remember correctly one time he was discussing in this cabinet class so parent one family goes to the zoo and they are watching the tiger tiger is all in enclosed nice enclosure so no tiger cannot come out but the child will be a little bit scared but when the child holds the hand of the father or mother and they are with them then they feel peaceful because they 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 understand intuitively that my father will protect me my mother will protect me i don't need to worry reality may be that when tiger really comes out father may not be able to do anything mother may not be able to do anything 
but the child is fully dependent on parents. That's why they are seeing full protection. That's why the child is peaceful like that. So that's the example Prabhupada is giving here. That similarly, we devotees, we understand whatever I have is from Krishna and whatever is going to happen is sanctioned by Krishna. And Krishna is my best well wisher anyway. So he will not do anything wrong for me. So when we understand and realize these things, then we can also be peaceful. That Krishna will take care of it. Even though external circumstances may not change for us. That I might get to go through the distress for some time or long time like that. But still, ultimately Krishna will give some benefit through this. It will help me to progress in spiritual path. That we understand. That's why we can remain peaceful when we understand that. Another reason we can remain peaceful is because we know we're not hankering for temporary things. Because we know the ultimate goal. So even if temporary things mess up, if the ultimate path is not disturbed because of that, then we're okay. So that's why devotees are peaceful. That's the first paragraph. Second paragraph, Prabhupada starts talking about equipoise. So this, this is actually high quality uh, equipoise, actually. Samadarshana, right? Yeah, so that's high quality. So Prabhupada is describing not seeing in terms of bodily conception and seeing everybody as a spirit soul, as servant of Krishna. That is the equipoise nature of devotee. And Prabhupada is saying, you can develop these qualities like this in the only in the association of devotees. Why? Because when we see what does it mean, when we see example of a senior devotee who is exhibiting that quality, then we can see what does it really mean, what does it not mean. Sometimes people say, oh, don't criticize them. Everybody is nice. We should be nice to everybody. So that they think is equality, generally. But finding a fault, as a, calling it as fault, inappropriate for teaching purposes, is okay. That's still considered equality only. Equality is not at a material level. Each of us have a different body, different qualities at bodily level. But ultimately, we are a spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna, servant of Krishna. Of course, I don't have the realization myself, but that's what we are kind of aspiring for. We're practicing slowly so that we can also get to that stage. So in that purport, Prabhupada is describing uh, three sentences I said we'll focus on. Such qualities develop only in the association of devotees. Without the association of devotees, one cannot advance in Krishna consciousness. These are all power packed sentences. Therefore, we have established the internal society for Krishna consciousness. Factually, whoever lives in this society automatically develops Krishna consciousness. Wonderful statements Prabhupada is making. So, now I'll go through other points and we'll come back to this because that's the central theme for today. So now, persons in Krishna consciousness are devotees of the Lord can please everyone. How come Prabhupada is saying that they will please everyone? He's explaining that. Because Everybody is happy temporarily on the bodily level. If you give him something, some money, if I give him $1,000 from day free, they'll be happy for some time. But then ultimately the $1,000 will be spent over and he'll be back to distress again. Like that material level, whatever you do, it cannot be sustained happiness. But if you help somebody to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, like Prabhupada is saying here, or to take up a book of Prabhupada and read the scriptures, then they're actually establishing their relationship with Krishna even though it's the first steps of that journey. So that will make them happy. Ultimately, and also now also while practicing devotion, we have the experience. We'll be happy also. So that's why Prabhupada is saying, we can please everyone by sharing Krishna consciousness like that. So, and next Prabhupada focus on how devotees cleansed and purified. Because we're chanting the holy name and we're encouraged to chant the holy name constantly. So when we do that, then we'll always be purified because Krishna said, we're taking association of Krishna in the form of holy name. That's why we'll be purified. That's what Prabhupada is describing here. So now back to the theme of the verse. So uh, I, I will start a little bit out to introduce the topic and then come back to these points. So basically, value of devotee association. That is the theme I want to say. So the... Uh, Again, this topic can be have multiple angles. For example, devotees are multiple levels. Actually, I was heard recently Radhana Samaraj uh, short clip. It was very nice. I'll briefly mention the synopsis of that. It's very wonderful. He's actually quoting from Chaitan Charitamta uh, Madhya Lila. The past times when Kulina Gram residents come and meet Lord Chaitanya. Apparently, they ask Lord Chaitanya uh, several times, what is the goal of life? How can we do it? How can we? We're all householders. How can we practice bhakti? How can we achieve perfection like that? They ask us. So Lord Chaitanya gives multiple answers every year. But they're all progressively nice answers. Radhanath Samaraj was explaining 
that uh, first answer he gives is um, chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Only two things, chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra and serve devotees, serve Vaishnavas. Simple thing. You maintain the statement every time, all the three times. Now, they ask a question. So, you said chant Hare Krishna, that is easy to do. You said serve Vaishnavas or serve devotees. Who are devotees? Who is a devotee? Like that. So, then he describes whoever chants the holy name even once is a devotee like that. First time. Second year, they come back and ask. Then he says, whoever is constantly chanting the holy name is a devotee like that. So, of course, Rachidina gave multiple other definitions, but in this context, Maharaj is explaining this. Uh, so, now, third, uh, third year, they come back. So, second year also, they ask the same question. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says the same thing. Chant Hare Krishna and Saudha Vaishnava. Like that. Then, who is the devotee who is constantly chanting? The third year also say, they ask the same question, how can we perfect our life? Then he says, uh, chant the holy name, Hare Krishna Mahamantra and Saudha Vaishnava. Then they ask the same question again. And this time he says, oh, the person is a devotee when anybody seeing him also takes up chanting. So, Radhanath mm -hmm. Maharaj was describing, that means devotees are at multiple levels. Is not like devotee means only this definition. That means they are devotee. Otherwise, they are not devotee like that. Sometimes we the reason this definition is important. I felt is that sometimes we think devotee means only pure devotee. So I don't want everybody else is okay. They are just practicing like that. We think right. So Chaitanya is giving right level of respect for each level actually. Nectar of instruction verse five also we hear how we need to respect each Vaishnava according to their level like that. That's why it's important to understand that devotees at multiple levels. And we have, there is association, benefit, benefit in associating with each level also, by the way. So that also we can discuss. So that's how he describes it. And then Radhanath Maharaj describes after that, that actually devotees can be in other ways also. Like in, we know from third canto of Srimad Bhavadam, Kapil Dev describes, uh, not, not third canto, oh, yeah, third canto, yes, third canto. That, uh, Devotees can be practicing devotion service, bhakti, which is pure in mode of ignorance, mode of passion, mode of goodness also. So Maharaj was describing it. He was briefly elaborating. Mode of ignorance, practice of bhakti, will how it will look. Like they will do all the follow, follow principles, but then they will feel insulted by Vaishnavas, they will blaspheme devotees, like that. That is mode of ignorance in one sense. Mode of passion is they are practicing bhakti, but they want to get something. I want to become famous. I want to become glorified, uh, like that. Some benefit for themselves, true deep mentality, like that. Other Maharaj was describing. Then mode of goodness is not having any of these expectations, like that. Practicing bhakti. Then transcendence, pure level of bhakti is to uh, in in love doing devotion service for Krishna with higher taste, like that. He was describing. So now, after describing this, so to encourage the devotee was asking the question also, and also. One wonderful principle uh, he was sharing, which is um, which is connected to the topic of devotee association. Maharaj was sharing. So we may be practicing bhakti, I may be practicing bhakti in mode of ignorance also. That's not a problem. As long as I'm sincere, as long as I'm not duplicitous, as long as I'm not envious that if somebody is practicing bhakti, they're growing up. I'm not envy to, envious toward them. I'm happy that they're growing. Then, and I maintain the humble mode, humility. So basically, as long as I'm humble, and uh, he summed it up like this, even though he mentioned different characters. As long as I'm humble, and then I'm taking association of a superior Vaishnava, who's elevated, then I can also get to the higher stage of devotion service. From mode of ignorance or mode of passion, wherever I am now, I can also get to that stage. So that is the glorification of Vaishnava association, especially for higher association that we commonly hear. And like I said, this topic can go in different directions. So I want to touch on the topic because that is the most important topic we commonly hear, which is higher association. So generally, Sadhu Sangha actually is, starts with the higher association. Sadhu, we know from third canto, there's a Sadhu Sangha Ashtaka versus also. Saudi is very high platform. Generally, we can equate it to everybody else, but Saudi is very high platform. It's a liberated soul. Tritikshava, Karunika, all qualities are there. Right? Tolerance, 
compassion all those qualities are there for sadhu he has love for god like that so all of us need to have that association in our life for sure that means we hear from prabhupad classes we hear read scriptures from prabhupad so that we purpose have we are getting association of prabhupad by just reading purpose of prabhupad like that and then we in fact we getting the association of so many personalities when we read simad bhagavatam sugudev goswami parikshit maharaj narada muni vyasadev uh, all the personalities mentioned here like drum maharaj in this particular past time like that we getting their association just by reading bhagavatam just by hearing bhagavatam like that so that is one level second level is and there are living vaishnavas around us who are who are descendants of drum maharaj descendants of prabhupad descendants of bhakti dan sar thakur like that right so we can follow them we can take their association also then that is also very beneficial for us we don't need to think for example prabhupad used to commonly say okay some people many people commonly ask questions in fact prabhupad so many times they ask question same question arjuna had the great benefit of associating with krishna we don't have benefit of associating with krishna like that so prabhupad commonly used to answer that krishna gave his instructions in bhagavad gita so we can read them and we can get a association from them like that number 1 number 2 who is representing krishna who is representing arjuna we can take association from them then that is also associating with krishna like that he says and prabhupad says when uh, krishna says surrender unto me and the speech master is saying surrender to krishna they are saying the same thing so like that when we we can take association from the living gurus also who are disciples of prabhupad or even senior vaishnavas like that that is one level and scriptures are filled with this this particular aspect of higher association how it uplifts our consciousness that is very filled up like sadhu sanga the love matra sadhu sanga bar sadhu sanga right just moments association of sadhu can uh, purify somebody can perfect we can perfect our life like that so i'm not focusing on that section of the angle today i'm focusing on a peer association and a little bit advanced than us or around us basically peer association that's what i'm focusing today uh, topic but i want to touch on this because that cannot be ignored that is most important whether we have peer association or not or not we need to start with that association for each of us that's our nourishing source we get the nourishment from that source from higher source and then with that nourishing source with serving krishna in the center we can all associate with each other श्री श्री राधा माधव की जय जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुंदर की जय निधा गौर सुंदर की जय श्री प्रपाद की जय सो सो द फर्स्ट फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज वी ऑल नीड अ हायर एसोसिएशन ऑफ अ साधु इन आवर लाइफ बाय हियरिंग फ्रॉम क्लासेस फ्रॉम प्रभुपाद एंड डिसिप्लिन्स बाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम स्क्रिप्चर्स लाइक दैट वी कैन टेक हायर एसोसिएशन दैट इज फर्स्ट थिंग नाउ बैक टू द पॉइंट अबाउट वी नीड टू एसोसिएट विद आवर पीयर्स आल्सो एंड मेनी टाइम्स मेनी डिवोटीज Uh, they are very good at associating with uh, uh, higher association very good at that and then um, if they know importance and then uh, many devotees are good at associating with people who are starting out krishna consciousness because is enlivening because new people coming they are excited with everything they hear because krishna consciousness philosophy and bhakti experience is so wonderful that we can see enthusiasm in their faces so it's very easy to associate with them also but where we miss out many times is that we don't associate with peers sufficiently enough so that is what that's why i'm focusing on that portion so the idea is that oh, how is the devotee association helpful there are many examples given uh, for example the one example i heard was like a bird birds go apparently certain birds depending on season they go from from winter they go to one country all together different continent all together and then summer season they come here like that they migrate between the continents like that right so if they have to travel alone it is a very big deal it seems for them to do that that journey and sometimes even difficult for them to do it also make it really but what they do is they fly in flocks of birds together and we might have seen many uh, i seen actually at least that when birds flock together it seems they are actually getting strength from each other so in terms of physical movement also in terms of law of physics also they are going through easily quickly to the wind it is faster number 1 number 2 they are safe because even if i am foolish when i am flying 
I might go into the something attractive and I fell into the net of the hunter. But there is one bird who may be wise, and they will tell us, "Don't go there. That is a, that looks very attractive, but hunter will catch you." So safe also. Similarly, when we associate with devotees, we have those two advantages. We can be safe in that with the protection of association of devotees. Number one. Number two, we get the momentum that is not there when we alone are doing. Most of us can attest to this. For example, when I chant in the morning in the home, every two rounds I feel like I want to do something else. I want to do. I want to look at the phone. I want to go uh, drink some water. I want to uh, see what is going on like that. But then when I sit in the temple, just because of my association of devotees, then you see everybody is chanting. Then we also feel like chanting. And and interestingly, same person who is getting up every one round, every two rounds at home. Can sit through fifteen, sixteen rounds here. That is the power of association of devotees. It is not our own power. Very simple examples. These are very. I, today I am not going to share something fancy. All the things that for us to recollect only. Why devotees are association is powerful. Such simple thing, right? And then you can imagine people come to temple. Like one someone came to temple. Just at the time we are offering the mother lamb. They may not know what is the benefit of offering the mother lamb. They may not know even Kartik month. They may know also, but even if they don't know, just because they came to association of devotees, everybody is doing. They will also offer the mother lamp. How much benefit they get offering the mother lamp in the Kartik month like that, right? And for example, I even share some so many examples like this. I we come to the Saturday morning program. So Krishna Prasad Prabhu, after he sings the Kirtan, Panchasta Mantra, and Hari Krishna Mantra, right away he starts going around uh, temple production. That is one of the sixty-four limbs of devotion service. If we alone come here, even if we know it, we are hesitating. Oh, everybody is saying, "Shall I go or not?" At least me, I don't know about others. So we are hesitating, "Shall I go or not?" Like that. First of all, second of all, our we are fight against our laziness, inertia. Shall we go or not? Just by being in the devotee association, now it is automatically done without my knowledge also. I even did not know this is one of the sixty-four limbs also. Later on, I found out. Oh, when I'm going Saturday program, one of the limbs is done, like that. And they would take charnamrut, they would take blessings of the Lord, they would pay obeisances in the deity greeting time. So those are all six foot limbs of devotion service. They're happening just because devoted association. So like that, small small things also we get benefit like that. So these all support the statement. After association of devotees, we can advance in Krishna consciousness because all these bhakti. Are growing, helping us to grow in bhakti like that. Like that, we can see. For example, I have the experience. Uh, I have the experience like I stayed in my mentor's home for about uh, three months actually. That was a blissful part of my life. I am not a early getting up person. I used to get sleep late and get up late nicely. Now because I am sleeping in my mentor's home, they get up on time. My prabhu, my mentor gets up uh, next to me. So then I also feel motivated to get up. Initially, just so that I am not embarrassed that I am also following like that, right? But slowly, what are they doing? They are doing morning program. They are doing evening program. So everything they are doing, I am not regulated person. I am in mode of passion and ignorance. But they are in goodness. So they are doing regulatedly everything. So just by being there in the association, I got up on time. I took bath on time. I attended Mangala Arti, Deity greetings, uh, Prasadam meeting on time, and evening coming back and taking bath on time, and uh, evening Arti on time, evening Prasadam on time, evening hearing, morning hearing on time. All that is taken care of. So I'm in mode of passion and grandeur, remember? But then, just because I'm associating associating with devotees who are in goodness and beyond, I could do it for three months. When I went back home, I tried the same thing. I could not do that. So that is the power of devotion. That we practically see these things like that. So, and for example, at this like this one more bit. Now we often hear how oh, hearing in the association of devotees is the best thing to do, right? Even Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing and discussing Srimad Bhagavatam is the best thing to do. So that means, uh, why is that best thing to do? There are many many reasons. One of them, it, few things I know at least. One of them is that Krishna is personally present when we are discussing Bhagavatam, 
and uh, great acharyas are personally present when we're discussing Bhagavatam because they want to listen to Krishna's glories, not because we are discussing, uh, because we're telling something nice, because we're discussing from scriptures. They want to hear Krishna's glories. So that's why they're all here. So that's the benefit of discussing with one more devotee at least when we're reading or reading, uh, discussing like that for of association. And then another one is each of us are each of us are endowed with different kinds of uh, intelligence and consciousness and thought process. So we benefit from that also. I might read the whole purport five times, but I might catch something. But Pamuchi Bhadan Prabhu might catch something. I read Pamuchi Prabhu might catch something. Chaitanya Prabhu might catch something like that. So each of us can catch something. So by discussing, actually, even practically all speaking also, so we're getting more nourishment from the reading of Bhagavatam like that, discussing Bhagavatam like that. So another aspect is when, uh, for example, if I'm hearing class at the home, then after 10 minutes, I might doze off. But then <laughs> I'm saying practical things, okay. But then when I'm sitting in the association of devotees in the temple, then that tendency is curbed just because of association, right? That itself is a big deal, right? Yeah, social pressure, exactly. Social pressure. And it's helping me to listen, first of all. Because unless I listen, I cannot get anything, right? So, like that also. So many practical benefits of just hearing uh, association of devotees right there, right? And then, other thing is, uh, when we're associating with devotees, we should also... Uh, okay, this is another wonderful thing. I was recently hearing... Uh, Actually, my mentor also told me in Bhakti Shastri class, uh, Nectar of Instruction class, when we we're discussing verse number two. I thought it's very connected, it was a nice thing. So I'll share that. And recently I heard from Amrendra Prabhu also. Uh, and he's quoting Radesha Prabhu class in Atlanta recently. So all on the same point, three devotees saying same thing, which is Nectar of Instruction verse two talks about six things that will destroy Bhakti. Atyahara, Prayasascha, Prajalpa, Niyamagraha, Janasangascha, Laulyapcha, Shadir Bhakti, Vinascha. Six things. Right? So there's a sequence to it. So he will go through the negative portion first, and then same thing we can apply to reverse it to the positive portion. That's how Amrita Prabhu was describing it. So when my mentor described Bhakshastri, she talked through only the negative portion, how it is leading, what's the root cause. Interestingly, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it brief because of the time we have. Interestingly, the starting point among these six things is what? Anybody can guess? Or anybody knows already? Heard this? What are the what are these six things? One of them is the biggest starting point. Achyahara, that's that, yeah. One more. The other. Yeah, enthusiasm is for positiveness, positive, right? Yeah. In this one, Achyahara over accumulation, prayers over endeavor. Uh, Achyahara prayers, Pejalpa, uh, talking Monday topics. Janasanga, uh, non devotee association. Laulyam greed, I miss something, right? Niyamagra. Niyamagra means uh, not following rules like that, right? Janasanga. So that's what Radha Prabhu is saying. My mentor also describes the same thing. So Janasanga is association with non devotees. So why is that important? Because when we associate with non devotees, then the flow he were, they were describing is interesting. Because when you associate with devotees, we'll hear something about mundane topic. It can be a very simple thing. But still, it touches our mind or heart. One of those two. Then uh, that leads to aspirations and desires and greed. That's how laulyam comes next. So then, uh, Janasanga, laulyam, greed. So greed developed. We want to get that. I want to get that. I want to become that. Whatever it is materially. So now, after the greed comes, what we will do? We'll do atyahara. That means we want to get that more of it. We want to try to get more of it. Over accumulation of that thing. Then, when you're trying to do over accumulation, then over endeavor is follows Pratya Prayasa. So then we're getting, we're trying to do more endeavor to get it, first of all. And once you get it, we need to maintain it. So both ways we have to do over endeavor, right? Prayasa. Then, uh, because we're doing over endeavor, now we don't have much time for devotion service now. Time is shrinking. But available time is shrinking. So now, what, what can you do? I cannot follow all the rules now. So now I have to cut short everything. Okay. Krishna is Bhava Jigahi Janadana. That is the hour of solace. So I will not follow much rules basically. 
Like that, the sequence goes. So this is the negative side. So now the same thing, you can take it positive side. If I associate with devotees instead of non-devotees, then I'll get positive aspirations, devotional aspirations, devotional desires. Uh, I, I want to be like them. Like that will come. Then that will lead into, instead of atyahara or accumulated material things, now I'm aspiring and uh, aspiring for um, spiritual things. So I'm aspiring, I want to do more chanting, I want to do more hearing, like that it goes. Then, but that is a helpful for devotion service. Then that leads to, uh, instead of prayasa, over endeavor for material things, now my endeavor is increased for spiritual things now. So then, because I'm, my aspiration itself is more now, now I'm getting more time for spiritual things compared to material things. Now I have more time to practice rules and regulations, Niyamagraha. I'm not doing Niyamagraha anymore. So like that he was describing. So, so like that, so that's a nice uh, way of seeing also how devotee association leads to all useful things. And like Prabhu was saying also, so devotee association, we develop the qualities like enthusiasm he was talking about. So Prabhupada commonly gives the example, how do you get the qualities by associating with somebody? If somebody, if I want to become drunkard, I go sit with somebody who is a drunkard like that. Similarly, if you want to be enthusiastic, this is a common answer Prabhupada used to give. If you want to be enthusiastic, I'll sit with somebody who's enthusiastic. I'll associate with them. Then I'll, I'll also get the enthusiasm to practice devotion service. In fact, Ramanujacharya is famous to say this, if I remember correctly, I think it's Ramanujacharya, that let us say we don't feel like doing anything in Bhakti. All we need to do is, if some devotees are sitting together and discussing Krishna Katha, we go sit next to them. You don't have to do anything. You just listen to what they're saying, what they're talking. That itself will boost us, inspire in Bhakti like that. So, so many simple things are there for devotee association, practical benefits like that. So, the actually there's lots of things. So, 846 already. So, I will mention a couple of more things. So, from the purport, right? We we're talking about qualities developed in the association of devotees. We already talked about enthusiasm, how it develops, right? Like that, right? Like that, we also see other devotees. Wow, this devotee is so kind. Oh, this uh, Radhishyam Prabhu is coming from all the way from Pune. He has so many thousands of followers, but still he's so humble. So, then when we see them, then we also want to be humble. We'll not think, oh, look, I have done so many things, great things in the world. We'll, we'll calibrate ourselves also. And then we'll develop appreciation for them. When we develop appreciation for others' qualities, then we develop their qualities. And when we try to find faults in others, then we develop those faults in our heart also. So it works both ways. So whatever we appreciate, whether faults or good qualities, is important to watch out for. So that's why we find appreciation. And we find, try to find something good in every devotee. So when we are meditating on those qualities, especially uh, elevated devotees, then we can develop those qualities like that. So that is a, a one more important benefit of Krishna consciousness, like Prabhupada is describing. So Samadarshana, how will you develop? By meditating on the qualities of others, how others are Samadarshana. Like uh, how others are treating, elevated devotees are treating everyone. When we see that, we can understand. Like Vaishwish Prabhu says, like when you see others, look at their eyes, we can see the soul, they're very active. Externally, however, they may be dressed and all that, doesn't matter. But there you can see the soul inside their heart. Like that he discussed when he goes to book distribution. So when we take their association, then we also learn, oh, that's how I can relate to the topic. How can I see the others as soul? Otherwise, it's theoretical for us, right? So like that, Prabhupada is describing. Now, uh, without association, not devotees, one cannot advance in Krishna consciousness. That's also a lot of things packed there. But uh, essentially, we all know Bhakti starts with the Bhakta only, devotee. Actually, Madhuri Kadambani is a book written by Vishnu Chakra Thakur. The whole first chapter is the analysis of this. How does Bhakti start? Is it because somebody did something great? Or is it because Bhakta is giving somebody something to somebody because they did something? Krishna is giving somebody something like that? Finally, analysis, mercy is causeless. By causeless mercy of a devotee, we start Bhakti. That's the important thing. Even Vishwana Chakrut Thakur also says that uh, we hear about nine states of devotion service, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, like that, right? So, even in that stage, even the initial Shraddha, we may think, I had some Shraddha somehow. That's why I started devotion service. 
That's so many things. Even the Shraddha is given by devotee. How? Some devotees merciful thinks that, oh, let me give some service to them. Then when they give some service, that service is done for a devotee, unknowingly or knowingly, then they get some Bhakti Sukriti. Through that, they're getting some Adho Shraddha. Then they will want to hear from somebody after some account, some build-up of that is done. Then, then Sadhu Sangha. We know six different steps with Sadhu Sangha. Then even, I didn't know anything about Krishna before I met the devotees. Even if I heard the name of Krishna, I didn't know what it means, what he, who is he, I didn't know. Everything about prasadam, chanting, holy name, reading scriptures, everything was told by some devotee only. Even if you're offering obeisances, how to offer obeisances, somebody told only. How to enter the temple, somebody devotee told only. All the things, right? So when we analyze that like that, we understand the importance of devotee association. To start bhakti, to continue bhakti, we already discussed many times. And then even at the ending stage, it's described even liberated stage, even pure devotee stage, still uh, as devotee association is valuable. Why? Because if there's an association only, you can discuss. Remember, was that 10.9? Krishna talks about Machita Madhagata Prana, Bodhenta Paraswara, Kadanchitya, Manicha, Tushanticha, Ramanticha. They are enjoying the bliss of Krishna consciousness by sharing with each other. If there's nobody, they can still be happy inside, but still they give get the higher pleasure when they are sharing with each other like that. So even that stage, what about that stage? Even when you go to the spiritual world, actually before going to the spiritual world, is described, we first go to somebody, somewhere in the middle world where Krishna is doing pastimes and we get trained by another devotee. Devotee association is very important there also. Somebody is training us how to do the service. And even when you go to the spiritual world, we are always under some devotee. They are training us. So devotee association all the way from here back to spiritual world also. So that's why when we need to develop appreciation for devotee association, appreciation for devotees, then we Cultivate it. The way, interesting thing about material world is how the taste develop is very simple. Many times we have questions, how to develop taste, how to develop taste. Just by doing it, especially by seeing other devotees' example, by following instructions of a guru, especially just by attending few classes, attending some sangha, spending some time with one devotee regularly. That's how we'll get taste to develop, uh, have one-on-one -on -one association. Initially, we'll think, Oh my God, I need to schedule a time with them. I need to get on a particular time. And suddenly something comes up, then I need to tell them, sorry, Prabhu, I cannot make it. All those excuses are mind gives. But once you start it in a regular schedule, having association with some devotees, it can be one or two devotees. That's still great. Then uh, we develop the taste for that. So that's what the, one thing I want to share with you. Now, another way is also it's helpful. Remember I talked about when birds example, where their birds are being safe and also they're getting momentum like that, right? How we can be safe also? When you're devotees, we don't want to do any bad things. That is simple, right? That's simple to understand. So, and when we're within we association devotees, we do something spiritual. So like that, we also need to be nice association with each other. Instead of talking Prajalpa, Prajalpa can be at multiple levels. One level can be, I'm talking about cricket match or something. And the level can be, I'm talking about something mundane still. Of course, talking about service is okay, talking about bhakti is okay, talking about Krishna is okay, devotees uh, in terms of learning from them is okay. But we need to watch out for how the association also is going and quality of association is also important. That's the point I wanted to stress. And then, uh, okay, one last thing is that um, wet and dry wood example I wanted to give you because the, the way fire commonly Fire can burn anything, but when you put wet food on fire, then usually it fire can be extinguished if there's a lot of wet food we put because it cannot burn quickly. But the same wet food, we keep it near the fire. Then the wet food becomes dry over time. And then now when the dry wood we put in the fire, then it uh, blazes like fire fully. So like that, we all have Krishna consciousness inside our heart. So when we get into association of devotees, through their mercy, that fire of Krishna consciousness is bla comes blaze from a spark. Like uh, Vaisi Prabhu has that thing, right? I think it's called fire. The, what is it? Fan the spark, right? Fan the spark. Devotees fan the spark. We also need to develop that quality, fanning the spark. 
they were growing the enthusiasm of somebody in service like that. So that's how the wet food to dry wood thing, right? Why that's important? Because sometimes we might have so many bad qualities also. So sometimes going to assume like how wet food, if all the wet food you put in fire, fire will stop like that, right? But we also can cause the damage to also sometimes. So we need to be careful. Sometimes if one particular devotee is not gelling with us or we're not like-minded with them, instead of arguing with them and instead of debating with them all the time, we can maintain some distance. They may be a little elevated, but they have one bad quality. Maintain some distance so we're still getting fire, but not, not inside, inside the fire. Like that, we maintain some distance. We get some warmth, uh, heat. But then once they are purified, we are purified, we can associate with more often like that. So that's also important, seeing which devotees are association is suitable for me. Like, for example, if some devotee is always uh, criticizing me, always telling me, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, that may not be best association for me, even though that's important information to know. But it's always important for us to have uplifted, feel hopeful that we're doing something valuable, we're going to get somewhere valuable. That is a association also we need to choose accordingly. And we also need to, I need to also learn, we also need to be a good, a good association for others. That means not criticize others in the association and then not always, sometimes in the name of humility, we, we always uh, discuss with each other, I'm so useless, uh, we are so useless like that. We, we combine everybody else also, not only me like that, right? So we'd be careful with that also. So we do give hope to others. It's good to have humility. But also we need to have hope because we have a wonderful master like Krishna who will take us up like that. So I'll pause there. There are so many angles we can go through. I'll pause there. Uh, please share what are the practical benefits you see with devotee association like that. Sri Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhautam ki jai. You like something in the class, one point or two points? Yeah, something. Okay. <laughs> but if you like the whole class, you need to pick one. That is a tough job for you. Oh, really? What do you like in that? Ah, nice. Yeah, very nice. Like that in Bhakti also? When you chant with others, then it is easy to chant, right? Like that, right? You have that experience? Yeah. Oh, good. Anyone else? Uh, I like how like, the Shinko has two statements. Like, you give a lot of statements. Shinko is like, the main goal that is in the And one that I really liked was um, the one that you said, like, if you want to become like a drug you can be like a drug like if you like if there's some if you want to be someone who's like um doesn't be sure you can actually be one like Oh wonderful point you got yeah. and one more was um I think it's from um family said that um uh, even though like some some days uh talking about Krishna you just uh go and you really sit there and you you don't have to think about it. Yeah, very nice point. Yeah. I really like that one because when you're feeling down, we don't know what to do. We just go sit next to the Buddhist. That's good. <laughs> nice points, actually. You, you listen attentively. Very good. Anyone else has any comments or any practical relations from your own life? I'm eager to hear. Uh, I really like your class. You touched many aspects. I completely agree that, uh, especially while uh, studying, trying to study Srila Prabhupada books, and trying to chant, so many aspects of bhakti, it becomes much more simpler while trying to do with devotees. If we try to do by ourselves, because I'm speaking to myself, so much condition, uh, it becomes all the more uh, difficult for us to practice bhakti. And uh, just by seeing other devotees' progress, uh, we also have the hope that okay, that devotee has progressed and he has come up to a certain level in the stage of bhakti. So, so okay, there is some hope for me also. Sometime in future, mm -hmm. my Guru and Krishna's bhakti I'll be there too. So that positivity comes just by uh, hearing to a devotee in the association. 
very nice group. Actually, Radhanand Madhav was stressing on no, non enviousness also in that session. It's like a 10 minute, I think. What is the definition of a devotee? That's the class. Uh, question answers. Repeat. Yeah. Anybody else? Thanks. Thank you so much. I'm like feeling the spiritual energy. <laughs> that is the name for spiritual energy. Mm. A lot of points Questions or realize practical relations? Yes. Uh, sure, no problem. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
lived there like that is me i i got a lot of money okay so, but when i came to us i came to the program of like so where there was no police or anything like that oh so, बहादुर की जय श्री गोपाल की जय गोपाल प्रसाद डाउनस्टेज रिज्यूमिंग इज स्टिल देयर सॉरी आई वेंट लेट वेट टेक ओ गुड ओ थैंक यू टू बॉडी सम ज़ूम सेलिब्रिटी जॉइन हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा हां थैंक यू बजे हरे कृष्णा